Today I'm going to show you how I remodeled the kitchen in this house for under $700. And this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how to refinish these cabinets step by step and exactly what materials to use, how to clean these grates super easily, basically have them cleaned for you while you sleep, how I salvaged this damaged countertop, and the hardware. Let's get into it. Now, in case you don't already know, I'm a real estate investor and real estate broker, and my goal is to try to make you more money. And so my rule of thumb is when you're looking at a house, if you're going to sell it, if you're going to spend a dollar before selling it, that dollar needs to make you $2. So you spend $1,000 on painting, you need to sell that house for $2,000 more. Here's an example for renting. If you're going to rent something out, and if you got some old stinky dog smelling carpet, probably a good idea to replace the carpet. If you then spend $2,000 on carpet and you can get the rent to cover what you upgraded within one year, then it's worth it. So for example, if this rented for $200 more per month because we put new carpet in and the smell is gone, then it's worth it. Well, now I'm gonna show you how this under $700 kitchen remodel will probably make this property rent easily for another $100 per month. First things first, it's not a bad idea to use a TSP cleaner. You can get this in a liquid concentrate, just buy one of those $1 little squirty bottles, make sure you mix it correctly, and just spray down all of your cabinets. Wipe this down, this will help you get rid of that grease that's especially common in a kitchen, particularly right around the stove. You ever go up to those cabinets that don't have hardware and then you open them it's like oh this is real sticky and greasy yeah you got to get rid of that stuff before you're going to expect any paint to stick so make sure these cabinets are nicely degreased some people like to do an optional step two and they'll use what's known as a liquid sandpaper this can be applied and then rubbed off in total for the kitchen of about this size you may be looking about two hours to do both the tsp and the liquid sandpaper if you decide to do the optional step two as well now Notice I didn't say anything about you actually sanding these cabinets. Uh, that's right, because the products I'm about to show you don't require you sand the cabinets and then be a judge for yourself if you like the finish or not. See, most people are going to make the mistake of just buying a can of a paint and primer, just sort of a regular wall paint and primer. This is actually a great quality product, but it's not the best product to use for painting your cabinetry. It tends to be a little bit tacky after you apply it. Usually you'd want to sand first if you want to do this. You could do all those gel stains as well if you want to sand everything down and you want to sit there wiping all these cabinets down with a rag and doing four or five coats. I've done all that crap before. This is a bad idea. I think the gel stains are a bad idea because after I show you this, it's just... Oh, I missed. Ugh. This Zinzer, and this is not a sponsored video, okay? But this Zinzer cover stain is amazing. I used to buy the little quartz of Kills Primer to prime any of my wood or anytime I had like an oil-based paint on walls or doors or whatever where that latex just comes peeling off. Yeah, you get those little quartz of Kills Primer. They're really expensive. It's annoying. You keep opening up all these little quartz. It's stupid. Get this instead. They actually sell this in the five gallon because it's a low VOC formula, which is good if you're worried about those VOCs. And for the 80% of you that don't know what VOCs are, it's basically just the chemical crap that goes in the air and some people think it makes you sick. And you know what, they're probably right. Now, here's what's so great about this particular product. I'm just gonna read off this part of the label here. Sticks to all surfaces without sanding, hides dark colors, top coat in two hours. Now, I never take this branding for granted. So when we used this product, we applied it and waited a day before putting on the color coat that I'm going to show you. This is going to be that white coat. It's that white primer coat, but their argument is that you don't have to sand. That's why I say step two with that liquid sandpaper is optional, but you got to have a clean surface. You can't have, you know, greasy cabinets and expect this stuff to work. Although maybe it might anyway, but you know what? You probably still end up finding some of the grease later. Now it also says that it's tintable. We didn't tint it, but uh, hey, you know what? I guess that might help you if you wanted to. Just tint it the same color that I'm about to give you. Now, the reason I came to this product was because I always try to read the labels in full, and I'm really looking for things like this. Seals all types of wood. New, weathered, plywood, uh, hide stains from nicotine and water damage, block stains from rust. I mean, it literally had 
everything that I was hoping it would because if it says it could do that, I'm like, well, we'll give it a try. And again, you're about to see what it turned out to without any sanding, which sanding is a pain in the freaking butt on cabinets. This we applied with a sprayer. You could roll this on, you could brush it on. I personally prefer a sprayer. Uh, we had a sprayer, so if you don't have a sprayer, you would have to rent one. That's gonna increase your budget a little bit, but you could probably rent one for a couple days for not that much more money. It's a really good do-it-yourself project. So the TSP, the spray bottle, and this primer should cost you about $150, especially if you use like a Lowe's 10% off coupon, and then you use your handy dandy Lowe's American Express, which is going to give you another 5% and then another 2% after that, you're gonna be able to easily get these products for under $150. And honestly, I think I have enough for another project. Oh yeah. Okay folks, this is where the magic comes in. And this we really only used about four gallons worth, but they tried doing that thing where like, oh, we don't sell this in the five gallon, we ran out. And I go, well, can you give it to me for the price of a five gallon? And they're like, Okay, so if that ever happens to you, ask. And you can actually see they wrote the price on here. So we got five of these. So that puts us at about probably around 160 bucks for the five cans that we had. We did use a coupon. We did use the American Express card. So all in all, five of these gallons probably came out to about $150 as well. Now, very important. I'm gonna give you the color, but I'm also gonna give you exactly what you wanna buy. Interior and exterior, first of all, that's great. I love it when I use things inside that say they're good for exterior as well. To me, it's more durability. Bare, and I don't know, I mean, I could be wrong about that, but this to me was very important. Urethane, whatever, semi-gloss, enamel. And, and then this is probably the most important part. For wood, metal, doors, trim, and cabinetry. You know, and then as usual, I read the label and I read outstanding flow and leveling. I like that. Uh, I like it when it says easy flow because the last thing I want are drips and it doesn't, uh, you know, level out properly. So I'd rather pay a little bit more for a quality product and I'm going to apply this with our airless sprayer as well. Now, obviously cleaning up the oil-based primer is a little bit more of a headache with an airless, but hey, you know what? It's so worth the finish that you get compared to brushing and rolling this stuff on. Now, this particular product actually recommends that you sand first, but because we use the primer, which doesn't require you to sand, I thought, you know what? Let's give it a shot and see what happens. I'm about to reveal to you what it looks like. Now, last thing, this particular color, if you like it, you're welcome to have it. I'm gonna give it to you right now. This is Coventry Gray. It's the enamel semi-gloss. Again, just copy that right there. Get five gallons of that. Honestly, you might only need four, but if you get a discount getting five, why not? Now, let's reveal the kitchen to you. So you remember what the before looked like, right? Just in case you don't remember, here's the before of these cabinets. Now, I'm going to show you the after and give you some extra tips and tricks. things to know about the kitchen. We've obviously got the white tile countertop and I had a proposal for over $5,500 to do a quartz white countertop and that was only with a six inch backsplash. See the problem with that is yeah you'll have your new island but then with a six inch backsplash somebody's gonna have to come fix all this drywall. You might damage the cabinets. An electrician would have to come reset these fluorescent lights because they're in the way of this tile. It gets really expensive. Expensive. So all of a sudden to transition this countertop and backsplash, you'd probably be in the neighborhood of $7,000 to $7,500 just to have quartz countertops. And I'm thinking to myself, that's insane. Why would I spend that when I know I could do this entire kitchen for under $700? Now, obviously for under $700, you're doing the work yourself. If you want to hire somebody else, it's obviously a lot cheaper to do it this way as well. But this is an easy do-it-yourself project. Let me give you some more tips and tricks. Then we'll talk about how we solved these grates, the sink, the tile, and the hardware. So something extremely important to know when you're doing any color really other than like a white, a Swiss coffee semi-gloss is you're going to have to mask 
the inside of your cabinetry really well. So you'll probably spend a day with just paper and tape masking this because when you come spray your primer on this, and I mean, look at that smooth finish, it's so nice. You come spray your primer on this and spray your color on this, it's very easy to overspray on these cabinets. And that's the last thing you want is to have overspray gray on your white. Now remember, we waited an extra day before coming in and doing the color coat. Obviously then afterwards you could go around and brush and do a little bit of touch up. I personally don't like using the brush a lot though. I'd rather have a little tiny bit of the occasional bleed through if that happens, if I missed it in the touch up phase, to me it actually gives it a little bit more of like this, this slight antique feel, which I'm not going for, but it's not a bad byproduct to have. Here's an example. Now obviously you can see here where I messed up and didn't touch this up as well as I could have, but overall the finish on these cabinets, in my opinion, I mean look at this, look how smooth that is. All of these that really did pretty well. I'm very, very impressed with how this color came out. So now what about the grates? Well, the grates on the stovetop were pretty nasty. Look at this before picture of the grates and look at what the grates look like now. Here's the trick for the grates. You buy ammonia, don't buy it on Amazon. Go to your local hardware store and spend a dollar. It's, it's literally cost you 99 cents. You buy a little bit of ammonia, you take your grates off and you can take off obviously the little uh, heads over here as well. Put them in a freezer bag, something that's going to be airtight and waterproof. Put them in overnight with a little bit of ammonia. Now this stuff is pretty hazardous, so I really recommend you ventilate the space, have windows open. I turned on the vent hood when I did it. Uh, wear gloves, wear eye protection, the stuff is nasty. But put it in the bag, put your grates in there. Wait overnight and the next morning, all that nasty grease and junk that's like caked onto your grates just comes peeling right off. Might take a little bit of a rub, do it again with the gloves uh, if you want the respirator and the goggles, but uh, it's amazing what ammonia does. I mean, look at the before and after of these grates and that costs a dollar and a little bit of effort. Now the sink was okay beforehand, but we didn't really want to tear out this uh, surface mounted sink for risk of damaging the tile. So we found a porcelain repair company to come in and give this a nice polish and look at the before and after. I mean, that's pretty good. I would use that, I would live with this. And after all, this is a rental. It's not like we're trying to uh, overspend on this property. Now, last thing, there was a pretty solid crack in this countertop, the tile countertop, which in my opinion, with that full backsplash, works really well now against these gray cabinets. You almost kind of forget that they're tile countertops because the cabinets are so modern, but we had a big old crack right here at the edge of the countertop, which really made it look nasty. But the same porcelain repair person that was able to polish this, porcelain patched the tile. It was right there. You have to go looking for that. Now, last step, hardware. Hardware makes a world of a difference. I highly recommend you use a level when you do this to make sure you don't have crooked looking hardware, but check out the hardware we got on sale at Lowe's. We spent under $150 for all this hardware. Now, if you're excited by the money-saving tips in this video, make sure to check the link below for the real estate investing course where I teach you all of the real estate investing tips and tricks that I know. This is one of my more recent ones and I always update the course with my latest ideas and tricks. So hope to see you there. We have private live streams twice a week along with over 350 lectures that are already recorded that you could watch whenever you want and you keep access for as long as you want for just one payment. Look forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions and follow me on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.